limited anonymity. And sometimes we transition into what I call spiritual identity theft. And one of the greatest but worst things that ever happened to this young generation of preachers, Bishop Gooding, is called the internet and YouTube. Because you get to go on there and steal preacher style and steal the content of their sermon, but you don't take the time to steal their consecration. And so you end up with a stolen revelation that cannot anything because it was unauthorized when you took it. The same God that gave it to me can give it to you. God is no respecter of what happened to the day when we put books on the floor and put our face in it and stayed up all night and your wife told you to come to bed and you said I can't stop yet God's still talking to me. What happened when we used to shut in and pray and lay on our face and don't move Help me to stay focused, Lord. But we've gotten so caught up in trying to be like everybody else until we end up still in styles and sounding stupid. Because can't nobody say, get ready like James. Or can't nobody say what the other preacher says but the other preacher. Because you don't know what the preacher went through to say what he's saying. And when you do it, you are an identity thief. I got to help you for a minute. There's a story of a dog. Uh, the dog went, he got loose one day and went to the zoo and he saw animals in the zoo. And as he went and looked at the animals in the zoo, every time he saw an animal, he tried to mimic what the animal did. He saw a porcupine had spikes. So what he did was took his paws, put spit on it, and he began to raise his hair up like a porcupine. He left that cage and then found the pig. Although the pig smelled foul, he noticed a distinct sound the pig made was oink and he had a squiggly tail. So what he did was he took his paws and he wrapped his tail around until it came in the shape of a curly fry. He went to the next cage and saw a duck. He noticed the web feet and the big beak, beak on the duck, but he liked the way the duck said quack. And so now he's walking with his hair spiked up, with his tail curled up, and instead of barking, he's saying quack. He leaves that particular cage now, and he goes where the other dogs are, and he looks at the dogs barking, but he's quacking with spikes and a squiggly tail. A couple comes up, looks at the dog, and don't understand the breed of the dog, looks at the cat zookeeper, and say, what kind of dog is this? Before the zookeeper could answer, the dog stood up and said, I'm a pork, a pig, a duck, a dog. In other words, I have no idea who I am because I've been too busy trying to be everybody else until I forgot my own identity. We've got to come back to the place where we let God define who we are. And we're not defined by the shoes we wear on our feet. We're not defined by the shoes on our back of the cars that we drive. Some preachers are guilty of wearing $500 gators and don't have 50 cents worth of education. Before you go get a briefcase and a business card and a big car, you need to get to know the big God that you preach about. And sometimes that doesn't come from cemetery. I'm sorry, seminary. Sometimes from getting a personal relationship with God. Let's not hold you long in this textual tapestry of truth. We find Jesus through the submissive act of obedience about to find out firsthand how important defining moments are. He's about to be subjected to a spiritual test that brings him to a processing period that will ultimately catapult him to the next place of his ministry. Now it's a defining moment that theologians call the wilderness experience. It's called the wilderness experience because he's the second Adam. And he has to willfully go through the wilderness because he has to take back what the first Adam gave up. And 